Praise the Lord Jesus. Let us turn our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah 30 verse 20. Jeremiah 30 verse 20. The Bible says, Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all those that oppress them. Now verse 21 says, And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed from the midst of them, and I will cause him to draw near. And he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Give it to me in the, in, in the Amplified Version. The Bible says, And their prince will be one of them, and their ruler will come from the midst of them. The Bible says, I will cause him to draw near. And he will approach me. For who is he who would have the boldness and would dare on his own initiative to approach me? Says the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible says, I will cause him to draw near. And then he asks a question Who can of his own initiative draw near? Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. You see, one of the blessed opportunities that we have is that God is everywhere. What does that mean? That we can access him at any time, anywhere. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And you see, I think one of the visions of our Father is that this thing is not on one person, but on every one of us. You understand? Yeah? Every one of us that... You don't need to wait for a special man of God, you know, for you to be prayed for. No, you can pray for anybody. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah? So that is one I believe, that's one of the blessed opportunities we have, that we can access God anywhere, at any time. Just imagine we're still in the Old Testament. We would need to travel to Israel are you getting me? We would need to go to Israel and then wait on some guy who we are not sure whether he's right before God or not for him to go in the temple to talk to God for us. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. We would not be sure what God thinks because there's a special place where we are meant to meet him. But the Bible says that when Jesus died, that curtain was torn from the top to the bottom. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And we are given access. That right now, anywhere you are, you have connection with God. You have access to God. Praise the Lord Jesus. I, I don't know if you understand how powerful that is. That I can communicate to God. I can talk to Him anytime, anywhere. I don't need to wait until I go to Fanero or wait until I come here. No. Anywhere, anytime, I have access. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. So now the Bible tells us something. It says, who can of his own initiative approach God? Who can of his own initiative approach God? That means God chooses. God is the one that chooses us to approach him. God is the one that causes us to approach him. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. None of us of our own free will can approach him. The Bible says he dwells in a light which no man can approach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He dwells somewhere where no man can approach. So he has to give you the invite. I remember when our father was preaching one of the funerals, he said that when you approach God, come with that mind that he has invited you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. You're not taking yourself there. No, he has invited you. You're responding to an invite. You're responding to a, to a call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, I want to just dwell more on that place of causes us to approach him. Now, in the Old Testament, we know that there were people that were ordained to approach God. Let us look at Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 8. At that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to minister to him and to bless in his name unto this day. So, God chose the tribe of Levi to minister to him. We all know that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. The priesthood line was from the tribe of Levi. So they were chosen. God chose them to come before him, to stand before him. That is one of the greatest blessings you can ever have, to stand before God. That you can minister to God. To stand in his presence. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah. So the tribe of Levi was chosen for that. They were given access for that. That they can stand before his presence. They can stand. They can, to, they can bear the ark because remember in the Old Testament the ark of the covenant typified the presence of God. Okay. So they can bear that ark. They can stand before God to minister. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. I remember it was an angel that was talking to, I think, the father of John the Baptist. He says, how can you doubt? Because I stand before God. You know, I think it's somewhere, I think, in Luke. Just somewhere in Luke. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Okay? For he shall be great. Uh huh. So he was telling him about John. Okay. Now verse 16. And many of the children of Israel shall, shall he turn to the Lord their God. So he was giving, he was laying out the life of John the Baptist. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. He was giving that this man is going to do A, B, C, D. So the man was just entering what had been laid out for him. Okay. Verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of, Eli- of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the, uh, to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Okay? And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. Okay? And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. And I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. The fact that he stood in the presence of God, he could pass judgment. Praise the Lord Jesus. He had a certain right to pass judgment. This was an angel. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that, when we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 8, it says that the tribe of Levi was chosen to stand before God. These guys had so much power. The Bible says that whatever they value the thing, that's how it shall be. If they say that thing is bad, it is bad. You don't have to argue. If they said you are unclean, you are unclean. (laughs) Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And if the man had a blemish on him, And he went in and he died. The whole nation of Israel will be in trouble. (laughs) Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. That's how powerful they were in in, in their day. That the blessing of the entire nation of Israel rested upon them. So he tells us, uh, yes, and the priest shall value us. The priest shall value it. He shall value it whether it be good or bad. As thou valuest it, who art the priest, so shall it be. Whatever he called it, that's what it should be. Okay? Now, when you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 10, um, he says that these guys were chosen, they were chosen to stand in the presence of God. Now, you go to Ezekiel 43 verse 19. Ezekiel 43 verse 19. Ezekiel 43 verse 19. And thou shalt give to the priests, the Levites, that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach me, okay, to minister unto me, saith the Lord, a young bullock, for an offering. So these guys were chosen. I just want to understand that place that they were chosen to approach God. They were chosen to minister to God. 
Okay? So when the Bible says that he causes you to approach him, number one, he gives you access. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. So when he says he causes us to approach him, now I'm helping us understand what that means. Number one, he gives you access, that you can access him. Okay? But then, it's not just enough to access him. Let us look at um, Leviticus 21 verse 18. The Bible says now, he was giving regulations concerning the priests. Okay? The priests. Give it to us in the amplified version. Amplified. For no man who has a blemish shall approach God's altar to serve as priest. So even though they were given access, that was one thing. But if they had blemish, they wouldn't approach. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, when God says that he has caused us to approach him, number one, it means he has given us access. We've understood that. But then number two, he qualifies us to approach him. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I'm going to explain that, okay? He says, for no man who has a blemish shall approach God's altar to serve as priest. A man blind, okay, I want you to mark those those particular things. A man blind or lame or he who has a disfigured face <laughs> or a limb too long. Okay? So physical uh, defects. Or who has a fractured foot or hand. Okay? Or who is a hunchback. You know a hunchback, eh? Or, or a dwarf. Eh? Or has a defect in his eye. Or has scurvy or inch, or scabs, or skin trouble. 21. No man, the offspring of Aaron, the priest, who has a blemish and is disfigured or disformed, shall come near the altar to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He has a blemish. He shall not come near to offer the bread of his God. Okay? Verse 22. He may eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy things, okay, he may do that because he has access. But approaching is another thing. But he shall not come within the veil or come near the altar of incense because he has a blemish, he has a defect that he may not desecrate or make unclean my sanctuaries and hallowed things for I, the Lord, do sanctify them. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Okay. So we have established from the scriptures that when the Bible says he causes us to approach, and we have seen an example in the Old Testament, this was given to the Levites. Number one, he gave them access to his presence. But number two, they had to be qualified to come. That means they shouldn't have any what? Defect. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. They should have no defect. He spoke of people that are blind. Now, translate that spiritually. Blind spiritually. He is lame. He's lame spiritually. He can't walk. You, you, you get my point? He has a hunchback. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Okay? He has, he has one limb is longer than the other. That means one limb may be crippled. And interestingly, when you study the Bible... And you look at all the Sabbath miracles. He handled all those issues. And praise the Lord Jesus. Every miracle that was performed on the Sabbath day, it was that. There was a blind man who he healed on the Sabbath day. There was a guy who was lame who he healed on the Sabbath day. There was a guy who had a crippled hand. That means one arm was longer than the other. And he handled it on the Sabbath day. And the Bible says we have entered into his rest. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. So everything Jesus did was for a reason. He was handling that. But more than that, more than that, okay? Uh, Psalm 65. Psalm 65 verse 1. Psalm 65 verse 1. It says, Praise waiteth for thee, O Lord, in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest prayer, and to thee shall all flesh come. Okay, he's speaking about God. Okay, iniquity is prevailed against me as for our transgressions. Thou shalt purge them away. Okay, verse 4. Blessed 
Let us read that together. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thine house, even of thy holy temple. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible says there's a blessing on the man whom God has chosen. Hallelujah. And that man he has chosen and he causes him to approach. Praise the Lord. And the reason for that is that he may dwell, that he may stay, that he may abide. Psalms 27 verse 4, it was David's desire that he may dwell. It said, one thing have I, have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the temple and to inquire in his temple. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. This was David's desire. It's what he longed for. A man after God's own heart. That means this is the heart of God towards you. Okay? It was his desire. He says that I may seek after thee, that I may dwell, that I may stay in your presence all the days of my life. Doing what? Beholding the beauty of the Lord and to inquire. So you behold and you inquire. You don't just behold only, okay? You behold and you inquire. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, God takes a desire of an Old Testament man and gives it to you. Acts, Acts 22 verse 14. Acts 22 verse 14. The Bible says, And he has said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee. Now, this was Ananias speaking to Paul. Okay? He says, The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. Praise the Lord. That was the calling. That was the, the choosing of God on Paul. He says, I have chosen you. You guy, I have chosen you. Okay? That you should know my will. That you should know my will, number one. And that you should see that just one. God has chosen you to see him. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. I, I want you guys to understand the gravity of this, the importance of this. He has chosen you that you may see him. It's not something that is obvious to everybody. Praise the Lord Jesus. It is what the Old Testament man desired. The best of the Old Testament man, David. That's what he desired. That's what he desired. So you can say, that's what everybody in the Old Testament desired. Because he was the best of them, I think, to me. Okay? So, it says, God has chosen you that you should know his will. That you should see that just one. Not just see him, but to know his will. Okay? And that you should hear the voice. You are chosen to hear his voice. Our father normally says that the voice of God is very expensive. No man had God and remained the same. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And now we are seeing that God has chosen us to hear his voice. Whether it be the voice of purpose, the voice of the message, or the voice of judgment. He has chosen us to hear his voice. Now remember the Bible says that the revealed things belong to us and our children, right? That if this was specific to Paul, it wouldn't have been written. You get my point? The fact that it's written, it means you can walk into it. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yeah? When the Bible says that the revealed things belong unto us and to our children forever, that can be seen in two ways. Number one, personally, what has been revealed to you personally, okay? It belongs to you. But number two, it can be looked at generally. What has been revealed? The word. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. The word has been revealed. Stop wasting time to ask for things that don't concern you. The word is there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Paul say that all things are lawful, but not everything is what? Beneficial. Now you're asking God, what did so and so eat? What? No, you don't waste time. Don't, don't waste time on things. Spend time in what has been revealed. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. 
We have too much. We have not yet finished. This word has been preached from how many years ago. We are still preaching the same word. Praise the Lord. Don't waste time in petty things that don't concern you, that are not beneficial to you. If it has not yet been revealed to you, it's not yours. Don't fight it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He has revealed to us his word. Study the word. Hallelujah. Give attention to the word. The Bible says, my son, attend to my words. Okay, incline your ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life, the Bible says, to those that find them. And they are health to all their flesh. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. He says, keep the words in, in the midst of your eyes. He says, let them not depart from your eyes. Let them not depart from your eyes. That means keep them there. Praise the Lord Jesus. There will be things that will come to try to distract you, but keep your eyes on the word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are caused to see. We are caused to hear. Praise the Lord Jesus. The fact that the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you have the, whatever desire you have for the word, you have it. It's by the Holy Spirit. It's causing you. The Bible says he works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. That time when you desire to read the word, that's the Holy Spirit working. Don't look for some spectacular event for him to cause you. No, the fact that you have desired, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Otherwise, you will wait and wait and wait for a spectacular event and it will never come. He says he, co- he works in us both to will. Are you willing? And to do, that's the Holy Spirit is working in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is the one that has caused you to come today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word has been revealed to us. Dig in the word. Stay there. If it's not in the word, it doesn't concern you. Unless it is revealed. And it will always be revealed for purpose. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that's the place of manifestation, like our father explained to us, that it's from a place of revelation, and when purpose is stuck to revelation, then manifestation. Okay? It's first unveiled, and when understanding is attached to what has been unveiled, that's revelation. And when purpose is attached to revelation, that is manifestation. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And he has revealed to us his word, and of course he has attached purpose to it. Okay? Anyway. Let me go back to what I was reading. He says, he has chosen us to know his will. He has chosen us to see that just one and and that we should hear his voice. Okay? Now, when you go back to Psalm 65 verse 4, it was telling us something, that we have been chosen and he has caused us to approach him. And I was explaining, the first part of my explanation was to show us that the place of him causing you to approach him, number one, he gives you access. But then number two, he qualifies you. He qualifies you. Because you see, the Levite was given access. But if he had a defect, he still wouldn't access. You get my point? So God, in that scripture, has to do both. He has to not only give you access, but also what? Qualify you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And that's not the gist of my sermon. Okay? The Bible tells us in, um, in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 20. Give it to me an amplified version. Amplified. Okay, give us the verse before. Now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot sleep. It cannot break down under whoever steps out upon it. A hope that reaches further and enters into the very certainty of the presence of, of the presence within the veil. Okay, where Jesus has entered in for us in advance. Praise the Lord Jesus. He has entered in in advance for us. And the Bible calls him a forerunner. Having become a high priest forever after the order with the rank of Melchizedek. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. The Bible says Jesus is our forerunner. He's the one that God sent to run ahead of us. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord Jesus. He was sent to run ahead of you and I. Now, that scripture is so big. And I just want to explain a part of what I got from it. Okay? It says, he's our forerunner. He was sent in in advance for you and I. Now, I used to ask myself, why did Jesus die? Why didn't God just say, you're all righteous? He just declares, all of you are righteous. Ah! And there's no need for death. There's no need for Jesus to suffer. You understand? He can do that, isn't it? He can just say, ah, from today, all of you are righteous. But why didn't he do that? Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13. For if the mere sprinkling of unholy and defiled persons with blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of, of a burnt heifer is sufficient for the purification of the body, okay? How much more surely? Praise the Lord Jesus. That means when blood was sprinkled and people were cleansed, they were purified in the body, a man would go away confident that it is done. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because he has fulfilled what the law had said. So when the high priest would enter, okay, they used to tie, I think, uh, a th- some kind of thread, you know, to pull him out in case, <laughs> in case the guy dies, eh? just pull out. Because nobody could enter in. And when they saw that man come out, they knew it is finished. They knew we, we, this year is blessed. Uh, we are just going to have fun. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Because the high priest has survived. <laughs> His survival meant that the offering was accepted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now Jesus is our forerunner. Jesus is our high priest. He said, he said something. He says, don't think I have come to destroy the Lord, but I have come to fulfill it. Jesus had to, your declaration of righteousness had to not only be a declaration, but it had to be done legally. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because he's the one that established the laws. Okay. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. The Bible says, Therefore by the deeds of the Lord there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. So, you can read the verses before. Okay. Verse 21. But now, tell your neighbor now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Okay? Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So in the same way that all have sinned, there is no difference. All have sinned, okay? So in the same way, all can be made righteous. Praise the Lord. Therefore, verse 4 says it, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, okay? Verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, okay, through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness, the Bible says, for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Give it me, amplified. He says, whom God put forward before the eyes of all as a mercy seat and a propitiation by his blood, the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation to be received through faith. This was to show God's righteousness. Okay? This was to show his righteousness. Because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over and ignored former sins without punishment. That means sins in the Old Testament were just covered. We all know that. The blood of goats and gods could not remove sin. It just covered them. But now, God, and you see, the, the Bible says the soul that sins must die. Somebody had to die. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so when Jesus Christ came, the Bible says, this is how God declared his righteousness. Okay? He set him as, as a propitiation. The blood that he shed was not only for your forgiveness or, the, or your not only for your remission, but also for the remission of those sins that were passed in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Verse 26. Verse 26. It was to demonstrate and prove at the present time, in the now season, that he himself is righteous. 
and that he justifies and accepts as righteous him whom he has true faith in him. Praise the Lord Jesus. All that was done to demonstrate that he is righteous. When, God, when Jesus Christ came, okay, the Lord demanded that the offering had to be blemished. The man lived a sinless life. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that because we are partakers of flesh and blood, he also took part of the same. Are you hearing me? Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible says, For it becometh him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Jesus had to suffer. Are you hearing me? He would have been our captain just like that. No, but he had to suffer that he may be perfect, that he may be qualified for the job. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. He is not ashamed. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. He is not ashamed to call your brethren. Why? Because he did it legally. Are you hearing me? That's two of us. Saying, I declare thy name unto thy brethren in the midst of the church, will I sing praise unto thee. Okay, verse 13. And again, I, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which the God has given. Verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He took part of the same. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 15. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Verse 16. For verily he took not on himself the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Okay? Wherefore in all things it behooved him, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God and to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Praise the Lord Jesus. Whatever the law said the high priest had to be, Jesus became all that. Are you getting me? He, he did everything by the law. He perfected. He was the perfect man. When the Bible says that you shall love thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself, this is the summary of what? Of the Ten Commandments, right? Nobody did that. But Jesus loved God fully. Are you hearing me? He did, it every, he did everything fully. He obeyed fully. Praise the Lord Jesus. He yielded fully. Praise the Lord Jesus. He was submitted fully. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the Bible says in Hebrews 5, 8, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. Okay? And being made perfect, he became... You see, these things were to perfect him. He, he, he became the offer of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, okay? For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points, the Bible says, tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, now because of this, let us therefore. Are you hearing that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The man did everything according to the law. Are you hearing me? Whatever law was given about the offering, about the priest, about all that, the man fulfilled it perfectly. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And he died. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he can say, the Bible says, he is just and is the justifier of them. Jesus is, God is just in justifying you. you praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he didn't just declare you righteous and say you are the righteous of God. No, he is just. I, I, I get the point, eh? It's a firm place. That the thing was done according. He was the right pattern. Everything was done perfectly. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why our faith is strong. Your righteousness is forever established. No man can doubt that. No creature can doubt that. Are you hearing me? 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil cannot doubt that. Because it was fulfilled perfectly. It was done perfectly. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he is not ashamed, the Bible says, to call you his brethren. Hallelujah. Just pray in other tongues. Pray in other tongues. Pray in other tongues. Pray in other tongues. Ipa shata la mande le gori para mande le gosa tala bayi. Raba shata la mande le gori pa sata la mande le kaya. Riba sata la du gori brusili manta la baba bayi. Raba shata la mande le gori para mande le bab. Child of God, you not only have access, but you are qualified to access because the one who is qualified is in you. The one who is qualified is in you. The one that obeyed fully is in you. The one that did it all fully is in you. He is your qualification. Now the Bible says that he has made us able ministers of the gospel. He has made us able ministers of the spirit. The sufficiency is not of us that we should boast, but the sufficiency is of God who has made you and I an able minister of the spirit. That means he has made you fit. He has, made, he has qualified you. You are the right person for the job. Praise the Lord Jesus. You are the right person for the job. You, are not, you don't just have access. You are qualified. Because the qualified one is in you. Rabasule prokole barande le kore barande le ba manta rabasata la de kore barande le kosa la ba e rada la rasata la bakaya oh riba shata la manto le prokole barande le ba oh riba shata la de kore boro yande le kosa la ba e ara manta rabasule kore barande le ba oh we stand oh. Thank you for your word. We thank you. We thank you for your word, oh God. We thank you. We thank you that we are winners. 
we thank you that we are not ashamed, oh God. We are not ashamed, oh God, because you're not ashamed of us. You're not ashamed of us. And so we are not ashamed in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the establishment of your righteousness in our spirits. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.